Right, well welcome to yet another episode of We've Gone Fishing. Not just anyone, but a very special episode. I'm here in France um, on a top fishery in Limoges called Top Carp France. Um, I've been here since last night, um, we set up in a swim, we've had all the rods out, uh, but last night was a bit of a rush, got the rods out, I cracked off twice sadly. Um, but yeah, we've got the spots established now, um, and the plan today is to go out in the boat and bait out and get the rigs down properly. I just flicked them out last night just uh, just to get you know a rod in the water and just see if I could get anything. Um, not much happened. I had a few liners, um, but the plan today is to go a bit more all out on it and uh, see if we can get some more. So without further ado, I'm going to get the bait out and get the rods out, and uh, I'm sure we'll be back to you soon with some rigs and some shots of the lake because it is a stunning place. Right, well last night finally resulted in something, a lovely 26 pound mirror, uh, we're probably looking at photos now. Last night they were all over us in the bay to our side here which is within our water, um, over in front of us and all over sort of near the bay that I told you about yesterday that they were topping over. Um, they actually came out last night, I suppose it was their second night with, with no bait, you know, them being in that corner so I suppose they came out for a feed. Um, it was a nice fish, it was really nice, you know, there's a lot of fish, a lot of movement. Um, I didn't catch anything else. Sadly, there was fish over my spots, but uh, nothing else happened. So I think today I'm slowly learning, getting the gist of things. It's completely different between these fishing. Um, I think today I'm going to put in a bit more bait, sort of two to three key over each spot. Um, I did get done by crayfish last night, so the plan is to harden my baits out in the sun, um, the maize hook baits, and uh, hopefully I won't get pestered by them. I'm also putting some plastic bait down the side there, plastic pop corn. Um, just over a bed of maize and particle. Um, there's a bit of hemp in there as well. So it's kind of a mixture. Um, and I think that hopefully we'll be getting some more. Uh, it, you know, if they're going to keep moving out of that, they were topping out to our left as well this morning, just sort of 30, 40 yards out. So they're definitely moving about, and there's definitely more chance we could get one. Um, <coughs> hopefully, as the week goes on, we can show you how it progresses and how I get on. Um, talk to you also a bit about the lake and the stocking rate, because there's some phenomenal fish in there. Um, and also our approach, um, you know, it's slightly different to English fishing. Um, I'm sure it can help you, and I'm sure I can help help you uh, if you come out on your first time here, because I'm certainly bit, having a bit of an eye opener. So I think it's going to be good, and uh, I think we should get back to you soon. Hopefully, with fish or whatever. Let's hope for the best. Well, here's my first fish. Of France trip 2011, and I can't believe it. 54 and a half pound PB. Oh, I can't lift it up anymore. Yeah, I can't lift it up anymore because it's so heavy. But you got some photos. You have a look at them. But oh, stun! <laughs> I have to put them down. Go on fishing. Oh, love you. Yeah. yeah. Got them <laughs> Should we say a neck loop 50? Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. I'm beast. I think he's ne a happy man this neck one. loop beast. Can't have Early in the morning, but what a happy man. Worked hard. Superb. Oh. Well, there you go. Yeah. Second fish of the night for me. Uh, after my PB there. 32 and a half. What a stunner. Dad just had a 26. His new PB, so... Oh, what a puck of night fishing. It's been hot, it's been in bad conditions, but... We seem to be turning it around. Spot on. Go on fishing. Okay, so last night is probably gather was pretty crazy. Um, there's a lot on the action now. We've got three rods in from last night still, and I'm pretty tired. <laughs> got up pretty late in the day. Um, so what I thought I'd do is just take you through my baiting approach, my rigs, and basically how I'm catching these fish. Uh, I know that coming to France is uh, quite a big step. Um, certainly was for me. It's my first time. Um, I didn't know a lot about how to approach this sort of thing. So what I've done is I, I spoke to the manager who's on site and that's probably the best advice I can give you is to speak to the manager because he's going to know what he's on about, he spends all the time on the bank and it just makes sense and the advice he's given me has paid off. What he said was to use a, a mix of particles, so maize and hemp which he cooks up on site um, and spread it out, a good amount of bait. He gave me a rough idea where to go um, and I've been spotting it out and I've been putting a good amount of bait out. I've been using maize as hook baits um, and that's what seems to be doing it. So let's have a look at the rigs and the presentation um, because I think it's working, you know, I've had that a couple of nice fish, so let's have a look. So basically, rig number one, the, the particle rig, 
Um, they, they pride themselves on uh, fish, fish safety here, rig safety. So basically, um, they like the lead free running. So what it is, is I've got a size 6 Nash Fang Twister there, a rig down the hook, a rig ring down the um, shank of the hook, a bit of shrink tubing, reasonable hair with three bits of maize on the hook. Um, this is Nash Missing Link, 15 pound braid. Um, it's a coated braid, so I've stripped back a bit, just above the hook to allow movement. Uh, you've got an anti-tangle sleeve, a quick link, ring swivel, going down to one of the quarter safe zone leaders, which are absolutely brilliant. Really good for line concealment, um, especially in waters like this where they're quite sort of finicky around lines. Um, then we've got a three ounce, three ounce inline lead. We all know the hooking potential of inline leads, they're phenomenal. Um, and I've been getting really good hook holes, bottom lip, inch back. So I'm just having it like that. It allows a lot of movement and whatever, and it's, it's a great little presentation. Um, and then that's just running up a safe zone leader there. Um, it's got a couple of bits of tungsten putty already moulded into it, so it's a really good, it sinks nicely, really supple material, um, perfect for concealing your lines. Um, and all I'm doing then, I'm not putting any bag out with this, because I've put sort of three key out over a spot a day or more, and I'm just putting a couple of bits of dissolving PVA foam um, around the hook just to straighten the rig out and get perfect presentation, because these rigs are sitting out there for a long period of time. So what we do now, is just have a look at the boily presentation which actually bagged as a fish last night. Um, the first fish and it was actually on the, the mixture of Hinder's Crayberry which I've got here. <laughs> Real nice fish mealy boily. Um, 18 mil, quite a big bait, quite a strong bait. Um, and also their own, uh, their own house bait which is, which is kind of a, a fruity smelling flowery bait um, in 15 mil. And the hook, that's what I call it on the hook bait. Um, really nice boily. Strong smelling, perfect, perfect bait, um, and obviously they've been fed on it. So there's nothing wrong with using the house bait, it's a brilliant bait. A lot of people are against it, they've got their own boilies, their own ideas, but seriously, um, take that into consideration when you come to France, use their own baits, so they've been fed up on it. So the rig that we use with that, pretty standard for me, actually kind of similar to English fishing, just stepped up tackle. Um, yet again, we've got the safe zone leader, this time in clay, because we're fishing to sort of a clay, silty spot, um, so I wanted a darker colour safe zone leader to blend in. Um, Leg clip system, just so that it runs free. Um, and also, you know, if a fish gets snagged up, the leg can drop as well. I've got the tail rubber pushed on quite hard there, but it, it's running off the swivel. And if, if I have a crack off or whatever, the, the leg can run off the, uh, the end of the, the leader. Um, then coming down to the same system, uh, size eight quarter ring swivel, down to a quick link there. Anti-tangle sleeve, and then we've got 18 pound there, super natural. Um, really, really flexible blade, uh, braid, nice braid as well. Um, then we've got, same again, size 6 Nash Fang Twister, a phenomenal hook, really strong, um, you know, you need strong hooks for over here. Um, and then rig ring, bit of shrink tubing, um, and then the house bait just top top, just cut in half, um, and then a uh, Hinder's Beetle in pops, pop up on top, just cut in half as well, so it's just sitting nice and lightly, just, and uh, yeah, just sort of wafting about there, really nice. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, it's a puck a little thing. Those are the pops there, they do it for me in England as well. Um, and yeah, they just puck a little baits. There's, there's, no, there's no harm in coming out to France, mixing and matching your baits with the baits that work here as well. Um, you know, but certainly take advice from, from, from the people that know what they're on about because you know, every water's different um, and the people that spend the most time on site are really clued up on what works here. And uh, as you can see, the results are pretty good. You know, it's hot weather conditions. We're, we're going up to sort of high mid 30s in a day. Um, really not a good fishing weather, and yet we're still catching a good amount of fish. You know, I had that lump last night, 54 something. We still haven't worked out what the exact weight was, but you know, <clears throat> still a puck of fish, a 32 and a half. Dada is PB of 26, um, and last night was the first night I really kicked off. And all I was doing was continually baiting over the spots. A couple of spots weren't going. The spot that I had my uh, 50, 54 off there wasn't going. It wouldn't. I didn't have a fish off that before. Um, I kept baiting. I kept baiting. And I thought, you know keep going it's got to pay off at some point we have fish all around the bay last night just to my left here all around there all over us um, and yeah it was about time that rod went and it did in the end so absolute pucker um, and the other rod left hand rod is out to the marker behind me and that's been sat there that's been doing the fish consistently every night um, and bite time is, is down to almost you know within a gap of 10 minutes um, sort of quarter to three is when it goes because that's when the water starts to cool down and that's the thing is establishing a a time where you can bait up and a time that you know what bite time is um, and you can be ready for it because I'm getting my rigs out at six, I'm baiting up over the top, I'm finished by sort of half seven, eight and then the
bedded down, and by three o'clock, we're ready to rock. Um, and the right hand rod of the one over there um, is a bally rod, and that's off to the side. And that's just fishing with that snowman rig, and it's just got a couple of baits scattered around it. Not much, no need to commit a lot of bait. Bullies are filling. You know, I'm only putting out, say, half a key over the spot. I started off putting more in at first, and now I've relaxed and I've put in half a key over the spot, and that's what went yesterday. So, not big baits, bit of an eye opener for me. Uh, I mean, I'm also putting a PV bag of Hinder's, little, of Hinder's uh, pellets, big bite pellets, specifically designed for France. You've got a mixture of really, really big mill pellets, or I don't know if. 15, 20 mil pellets, you've got, you've got hemp powder pellets, you've got carp protein pellets, sort of 7, 8 mil, um, and all I'm doing is putting that in a bag with a bit of boilie crumb, and as simple as that, just a little bag. You know, you don't need to go over the top in France, yeah they're big fish, they do need a lot of bait, especially on particle, fill them up in particle, but you don't need to go over the top. That's my key tips. I think what we're going to do now, um, we've got the rods in, I think we're going to walk around, show the facility he's got on site, because they are phenomenal, um, and the, have a look at this beautiful lake, because Really, it's beautiful. So let's get going with that. Right, so here we are in one of the swims nearer to the lodge and uh, what I thought I'd do is just talk about the layout because it's quite different to usual lakes. Um, basically you've got four swims on a lake. Um, for example this is one, this is peg one and two here. Um, this is a double swim so in each peg you can get two anglers um, apart from peg three. Um, so that's four pegs, you've got three double pegs, one single peg and the lake is divided into four. You've got markers running down the middle you know, it's not obsessive markers, and they're nice, they're not, they're not too bright, you know, not going to ruin your view or whatever. Um, and therefore you have a huge amount of water to each swim. You've got, I think the owner James was saying to me that you've got over two acres each, to each swim. Um, and everything, as, you know, every swim has a good contrast. You've got the, the shells, in this swim for example, to the, to the left you've got the island, to the back you've got the snag running around, you've got open water, you know, you've got a hell of a long cast and everything. We've got absolutely everything in our swim, for example, we've got the bay, we've got the deeper water, we've got everything, everything you could possibly need in any swim. So there really is no worry about what swim you set up in. Um, the fish circulate a lot, and at the minute they're moving about, they're up there, they're down here, and they're in every swim really, and they really are comfortable swims as you can see. This one's right next to the lodge, it's perfect for, you know, the angler who wants to be more of a comfortable angler. Um, you've, got, you've got facilities right there, which we'll show you in a minute. Um, and yeah, you've got gravel swims, um, not a problem. Um, it's just really pucker, you've got no trees that screw in your casting, you've got a beautiful view from each swim, the trees surrounding each swim, really is what, what more could you want from a swim. Um, so I think what we do now, we'll show you the facilities that you've got on site. Um, yeah, I'll show you that. So what I thought I'd do now is the heat of the day. There's a lot on the action. I thought I'd just show you around the, the top facilities they got here at Top Cart France. Um, really, everything you need and more for the week. So let's have a look. Follow me around. I'll we'll show you first into the showers. Um, this is the main unit where you've got everything your showers, your toilet. Um, around here, you've got an absolutely lovely shower. I mean, it is. Um, I'd say one of the best showers I have, probably. Uh, it's just in here. So basically, You've got your hot cold water, um, your shampoos and whatever if you really forget something, mirror, um, you've got places to hang, hang your clothes and whatever in there and things like that. Um, your light as well, so you can use it in the middle of the night like I did. I used it, um, you know, for the middle of the night about 50, I used it, so spot on really. You can use them whenever you like. Need be if you get in the water or something, you're a real trophy fish, you want to get in there, you can do. Um, then we've got round here. We've got the sort of main area where you it, like, things like your tackle um, and whatever. If you can't get it on the plane or you, you can't get your rods or these or whatever, and your car's not big enough, you can come in here and you can get what you need. So, you've got your bed chairs and stuff. There's more stuff in the lodge as well. Um, but this is also basically where you cook your bait and stuff. I've got an order now, bait's cooking away. 
it smells lovely. You've got the house bed and opening there. Um, and yeah, you've got charging facilities as well for your phone and other technology that you may want to bring with you. Uh, you know, laptop or whatever, or DVD player, something like that. It's all there, it's all spot on. So we go outside, just there, you've got your bins, you've got your bottles and everything, so you just put it in a, in a black plastic bag and you you bring it up, it's all sorted. There's no need no, to take it away, but very easy. Around here, on the side here, we've got the, uh, the toilet. Most you probably need to do your business or whatever, you can't go on the swim. So you've got your toilet, really nice, you've got, you know, Place to hang up your clothes and whatever, and a uh, little picture on the walls and magazines, and everything, everything ample. And like I say, all these facilities can be used any time of the day, morning, night, you know. Um, and yeah, really spot on. So here, you've also got the water. Um, obviously, you don't have to go out and buy your water, it's all here. Um, use it as when you want, same as all the others. Nice cold water coming out of there, you know, on tap, perfect. We've just filled up ours. Um, all you need is, is cool, you know, on a hot day like this, you need to keep yourself hydrated. Spot on, it's just a quick nip from my swim up here on the bike, and we've got fresh water. So what we're going to do now, there's more facilities in the lodge, we're going to go around there and have a look at the lodge. So let's get in there. This is the lodge, what I'm going to do is just show you the facilities that are inside. Um, basically, as you come in here, this is where you come for your main briefing. When you first get here, the first day of the week, or whatever, first half day of the week, you come in here, and you'll be told about the lake, the systems that it run, you know, how it runs, the fish safety, and all that sort of thing. You sit down on this table, um, you sweat out what peg you're fishing, you know, draw it out if there's a couple you want the same peg, things like that. Um, and yeah, that's basically what it is. You've also got um, pictures of big fish up on the wall here. As you can see, you've got, you've got some fish over 30 key here, you know, big fish. Um, you've got a couple of 20 keys, 18s. You've got, you've got plenty of big fish to go for. Um, really, is, there's a lot of big fish there. Um, you know, you've got a lot of 50s floating about, and a lot, of, a couple of 60s, you know, and even yeah, a few, a few 70s. So it's a lot to go for in the lake, as you can see. Beautiful fish. Um, you got a big guy here. It's a stunning fish. But yeah, this here that you can see hanging from the wall. This is something they're very strict on. I don't blame them to this. It's fish safety. Um, you've got some of the top manufacturers tackle here, um, and this was this whole bunch that you see hanging on the wall here was found wrapped around a fish. And that's from anglers maybe using a tackle wrong or the tackle not being safe. Um, so they pride themselves on that. So when you come, you know, make sure you, you know, they're, they're, they're running for it, but just have a think about your tackle and what you're using because you don't want to hurt a big lump like this. It's, it's not fair. You know, if someone else catches a big fish and it's got something wrong with it, and that's their PB. It's a great shame, you know. I certainly wouldn't want anything wrong with my 50. So yeah, fish safety and whatever. Um, and as you come around over here, we basically have. Um, the fridge freezers. So if you buy any frozen goods or whatever with you on your holiday, you know, you've got them over here. So here you've got your fridge. You've got a load of our food in there as well. Cold drinks, hot level like this. Freezing cold coke, you know, spot on what more could you want. Um, meats and whatever, all that sort of thing. Everything's really catered for. Great facilities here. Um, what more could you want, you know? I think you've got everything covered um, to make it an enjoyable week while you're here. So hopefully you can have as good a time as what I've had. I'm going to get back down in my swim now, so I'll just see you in a bit. Okay, well, here we go. First fish of the, I don't know what night it is, <laughs> but some night. Uh, coming on to the end of the week now. Um, lovely 24 pound mirror. Uh, just had it off my spot. It's getting on maybe half 11 now. I haven't gone to bed yet. Um, lovely picking fish up before bite time. So, spot on. Hopefully, we can uh, have a bigger one <laughs> like last night and uh, see what happens. Spot on. Right, well, there we go. It must be early morning now. Getting on 5.36 ish. I had this rip and take off on the boilie rod. And what a stunning 37 pound mirror. Oh, knacker. Oh, absolutely knackered. Spot on, let's get her back. Go on fishing.
Okay, so it's early morning, well, mid-morning now on our uh, last day. Sadly, it's getting on that way. Week's absolutely flown by. Um, and last night, we had a bit of a result. Uh, you probably saw the £25, the video of that. Um, but we actually had a, a mid-40 last night, a common. Um, really chuffed for that. I wanted a common. You know, I wanted to go home and say that I've had a mirror and a common. Um, but I didn't expect the common to be so big, so really pleased with that. Um, didn't get the camera out because I didn't want to faff about. Um, the lighting was terrible and we couldn't, couldn't get the fish to show up, so a bit of a pain in the ass on that one. But um, the weather changed completely last night. Storms moved in, thunder and lightning and everything. Um, so we reeled the rods in in the end and just thought we'll just leave the fish without a line in the water. Um, and that way we don't have to come out in the middle of the night with thunder and lightning or whatever and, and play a fish and thunder and lightning and get, get shocked by lightning. So uh, yeah, we brought them in um, and we also had some heavy rain last night. Um, really was quite heavy. Um, the ground's still dry. But I think that's what we needed was a bit of rain. Um, maybe tonight it kicks off. It's cooler today, even though it seems just as hot. It is cooler, it's only probably mid to high 20s. Um, so it's a big contrast compared to yesterday where it was mid 30s. It was really hot yesterday. Um, so maybe we can get a bite in the day. Uh, it's, it's just been a bit picky on when they're feeding. Um, but yeah, hopefully we can get a bite in the day. It would be nice to think so. Um, and maybe show you a fish in, in proper light because they are stunners. Um, and hopefully a couple more big ones tonight. Maybe we're going all out on it. We, 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 we're going to put the rigs back out tonight um, earlier in the afternoon just to see if we can entice that big one um, or maybe entice a take earlier. So we've got a good amount of bait um, ready to rock. All the rigs are ready to go. Um, we're going to be going up soon having a barbecue, make the most of our last day, um, and then put the rigs out sort of mid to early afternoon. So I think, I think it's going to be a good night. Um, hopefully I'll be getting back to you with fish um, and yeah it's just a shame it's coming to an end it's, it's been a cracking week so yeah I should get back to you before we go um, and hopefully with another fish hopefully another big one Here we go, last night um, of the week, we well, a stone little 26 pounder, just uh, not even dark yet, starting to feed earlier, um, due thunderstorms tonight so we'll see how that goes, but yeah what a corker, <laughs> well happy, what a great week, let's get her back, go on well, fishing. Uh, as you probably see by my face, it's the final morning, I look pretty knackered, I feel pretty knackered, um, I think that's a sign of a good week, had loads of fish, um, even in terrible weather conditions. We've managed to catch, um, and well, cause for my first time in France, I think it's quite good. Um, according to the guys at the lake, it's much better than this at other times of the year. Um, they really have got some phenomenal fish. Um, four fish over 70, up to mid 70s. So, really, is this is a lot to go for. Um, I'm sure I'll be back here again soon. Um, but yeah, just gonna get packed now and get ready to go on the airplane. Um, week could have been any better. Absolutely spot on. All the accommodation, the, the you know, hospitality and everything, absolutely spot on. It really was. I maybe don't like I appreciate it right now, but that's because I'm absolutely knackered. <laughs> and it is like 5.30 in the morning. But it's been an awesome week. I'm so chuffed with the fish that I've caught and everything. Far beyond any expectations, so yeah, far you give it a go. Um, I'll put the links in the website for Top Cut France, so you can have a look at that because seriously I'd consider it. Um, it's quite unique, it's quite well known in Europe, um, it's quite a big fishery um, and yeah quite sought after obviously because you've only got a four swim so it really gives you something different and uh, yeah it's really worth looking at. I'm going to get on now and get packed up so I'm not late for my plane. Um, and hopefully I'll see you next time, probably on the bank in England somewhere. So yeah, I'll see you then. Cheers guys.